All right, I want to give my bit on PowerPC uh, versus the Intel chip, at least within Apple's history. And uh, this is primarily a response to uh, Gareth's request, which I believe he had a um, request to comment on which he preferred, uh, whether it was the, the PowerPC chip or the uh, new Intel chips. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, respond to that. Let me first state that I am partial to the PowerPC chips. Uh, I do know that uh, the Intel chips currently um, have superior performance, um, but I'm a firm believer that had there been enough time that uh, Apple would have been able to continue, at least hardware-wise, with the PowerPC chips. Uh, I, I take, for example, the new Power 6 chip from IBM, uh, which is just a monster in itself. Um, I think they've benched over 5 gigahertz on their uh, dual cores as well so uh, certainly oh and, 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 and the power 6 apparently uses the same energy uh, and cooling that the G5 uh, required so um, I do know that there was complications with, with, with going mobile on the G5 uh, but I'm a firm believer that uh, perhaps if relationships had gone better, and I'm not, I'm not really going to delve into that because I really don't know all the details. But f per the rumors of the relationship between Apple and IBM, um, all things being equal, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident uh, a hardware platform could have uh, been generated for the mobile chips. That said, I really don't, really, I, I really don't hold the opinion that that was the main reason why uh, Apple moved to Intel I think they were just I think that they had made that decision uh, prior to um, any G5 complications in that to me at least it makes sense for Apple to try to make it easier uh, for the existing pro programmer base that, that, that is compatible with the Intel architecture to be able to run on on the Apple so that they don't really have to do two sets uh, of code one for the Intel and one for uh, the PowerPC chips. Uh, to me, that would that would make a whole lot of sense. And and Apple's essentially uh, uh, for the future as well uh, increased exp exponentially what can now run um, on a Mac. All right. That said, uh, which is better and all this other stuff. Um, Intel or the Intel architecture and, and going in line with with uh, AMD are, are, are dominant obviously within uh, the retail side but a lot of the server side uh, is still dominated by uh, power CPU architecture or uh, similar architectures to the PowerPC chip. Um, they have lost ground um, but that was what IBM was is uh, trying to respond in bringing back these these big servers to the uh, power architecture, uh, primarily competitors like HP and so on, that uh, they they want to um, directly compete against and bring back uh, those servers that were current or are currently using the Itanium Intel chips. That said, the debate about which is better or faster, if we were to uh, all things being equal. Uh, on power and so on and so forth, the actual the actual common denominator between the uh, power architecture and the power PC uh, architecture versus the Intel, and I, I'll, I'll just say this: th there's a common denominator at least between the power side, including the power PC chips, and then versus the Intel, they use different instruction sets. And I touched on this earlier uh, on my 32 and 64 bit video, and that is uh, RISC versus uh, CISC. Um, architectures and instruction sets. One being uh, CISC, which is Intel, uh, Complex Instruction Set Computing, and then RISC, Reduced Instruction Set Computing, which was all your PowerPC chips um, and uh, the, the, uh, the SunSpark, um, pretty much most of IBM's chips are all um, Reduced Instruction Set, Instruction Computing architecture. So We'll delve the uh, video into that, RISC versus CISC. Now, I know that I said that in another video that it's marginal, and that's primarily because when once RISC 
uh, the risk side debates with the CISC side. They just simply bring up the, the, the multi-core, so on and so forth, and, and go at it with results. And I really don't want to get in, in, into that side of the debate. But if we were to equal the playing field, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, for instance, on the, on, the, on the risk side, the whole idea of that is to reduce um, the, the chip cycles. Um, this is this is primarily why the uh, PowerPC chips had lower uh, frequencies, like you had 800 megahertz versus the Intel Pentium 4s, which were just skyrocketing. And primary reason is that if we were to, if I were to take an example, and we just have two small problems that we want mathematical problems or calculations that we want to solve uh, in a CISC Intel architecture we could put them together um, and then it's going to be a processed as an instruction set um, it, it will use uh, little RAM uh, and I don't want to get too technical, so I'm just going to just keep it simple. Basically, you'll you'll put those two calculations together. It's going to use less RAM, but you're going to at the expense of CPU cycles. So it needs to run the frequency faster to get uh, what it needs to do um, um, to get you that that performance. Um, whereas the RISC, let's say we have we take those two those two same calculations, uh, it would be broken down into uh, four small instructions. It would require more RAM, but it would only do it um, in theory, well, in this application, we'll just say it'll do it in one um, CPU cycle versus the CISC doing it in multiple cycles. Now, at the code level, RESC requires more lines of codes, uh, more lines of code, sorry, and the CISC requires less lines of code. Um, so you can, you can balance that out. At least on the hardware side, uh, and you were to clock a CPU, um, RASC um, would would obviously have performance on that side. Uh, but there's you you, can, you you have to take the argument, and I really just wanted to, to shy away from that and, and involve it from the software to assembly on how much has to be compiled and set instruction sets, so on and so forth. But that is the fundamental difference between the, the power architecture and the Intel architecture, that being RISC and CISC. That said, Sun and IBM and, and many other Unix players uh, are still using RISC. Um, so that says something for RISC. Uh, I will also say that um, on, the, on the Windows side of things, Microsoft's uh, NT351 was compatible with RISC and uh, uh, of when, like, which I've stated before, NT4, which was uh, my 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 favorite of the existing Windows operating systems, was compatible with RISC architecture. So that said, I hope that answers the question. Uh, I am I like I said before, I am partial to the PowerPC arch architecture. I love my G5 very much as my main uh, Mac that I use in the house. Although I have the Intel Macs around, I just uh, like like my G5, I think I get enough performance out of it uh, versus the other Intels. Now the G5 has some advantages, uh, even even though it's a much older chip in some things. Uh, but uh, I, I do my Intel uh, Macs uh, do perform better. Uh, I just have a lot on the G5. I've had it for a little while, so it's my main machine. Anyway, uh, I do look forward to the Penryn. Um, chip that's coming out from Intel. I think that's something um, really cool um, with their 45 nanometer. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, thanks for watching.